Hello class, um, this is Mr. Leung and welcome to the very first of my podcasts. Um, again, uh, you've heard all about my rants about trying to flip the classroom and all that and so this is my first video and first try at attempting this. Um, forgive me, I am a little camera shy, my hands are camera shy. And um, uh, I am also working on my ability to produce these videos so without further, further ado, let's begin. Um, and feel free to stop this video whenever you need to. Um, before this, we did talk a little bit about solutions. And um, we talked a little about solutes and solvents. We know that solutions are basically made of solutes and solvents. So for example, we had some sort of cup of water and we had some sugar. And we were just craving uh, sugar water one day. We decided to dissolve the sugar in the water, H2O. We know that um, our solute would be the sugar. And that our solvent would be the water. Because we are dissolving the sugar in the water. The solute is usually the one that's being dissolved in the solvent. Um, oftentimes you can think about it, a good way to think about it is that the solute is the one of the least concentration um, while the solvent is the greater. Um, and we also talked about how um, sugar, we know that sugar disperses pretty evenly in um, water and we call this, if it is able to dissolve, um, soluble. Okay, but let's say um, we decided instead of putting in sugar into the water, we put in some quarters. Okay, these quarters are not going to dissolve in water here. And so um, something like quarters or iron filings, I don't know, um, we would call um, that insoluble, which is basically a solute which would not dissolve in the solvent, okay, would be insoluble, okay? That's just a review. Um, but the big question that I wanted to ask and wanted to answer today is, to look at how do we measure concentration, okay? Because basically, um, what we're essentially doing is concentrating a certain amount of solute in a solvent. When we put in sugar, and we can keep on adding sugar and just make it more sweet, okay? Um, and just for a formal definition of concentration, concentration is the amount, or yeah, I'm just gonna, amount of solute in a solvent okay we want to know how do we measure the concentration of a solution well one of the most common ways of measuring the concentration of a solution is through what we call molarity okay this is the most common common way that we measure concentration okay um, and what essentially what well, we can represent first of all molarity with a big M make sure that you always represent molarity with a capital M okay and uh, what essentially molarity is is the moles of solute over liters, liters, not milliliters, liters of solution. Okay, pretty simple. For example, let's say um, we decided one day we were making some sort of cleaner and we decided one day we would dissolve 10 grams of sodium hydroxide in um, 0.100 liters of our cleaner solution. Well, this is pretty simple. In order to find the molarity, molarity of sodium hydroxide in our solution, okay, see what I did there? Um, we would first need to find the amount of moles of sodium hydroxide because we know that we're dissolving this in the solution, so this would be our solute, okay? grams of NaOH, um, there are 40 grams of NaOH for every one mole of NaOH, here I'm using our mole ratio, 
this turns out to be 0 0.25, did I do this right? Yes. 10 divided by 40 moles of NaOH. And finally, to get our molarity, we have our moles of solute and our liters of solution. Just plug in the number 0 0.25 moles of NaOH over 0 0.100 zero, zero, uh, liters, liters of solution. Oops, sorry, of solution. And we will get uh, 2.5 molar. This is how we refer to the molarity of the concentration of something. 2.5 molar NaOH. Okay, that would be some pretty strong cleaner. Okay. The second way that is pretty common in terms of uh, measuring the concentration, again, we're looking at the concentration of a solution, is through molality. Um, notice that I did not capitalize our, our M here. In this case, molality is represented by a lowercase m. Okay, It is not uh, used as often as molarity. Molality and molarity sound very similar. Okay, good way to remember that is that one has one L, another one has two Ls. Molality is simply the moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. And it's pretty simple. I'm not going to do a practice problem for this. Um, basically, if we had the same example, we would just say uh, 0 0.1 kilograms of solution. Okay. It's just another way of measuring the concentration. And then in this case, um, because let's say if we had a solid and we really, it was really difficult to measure the, um, the volume of the solid, okay, we can use kilograms, measure it in terms of weight, okay, and get our molality from that, okay? So those are two common ways of measuring the concentration. Lastly, another common way of measuring the concentration is through the mole fraction. And it's basically exactly how it sounds, okay? Um, for example, um, if you wanted to, well, the mole fraction essentially is moles of, moles of a component over total moles. of solution. So here we're not necessarily talking about the solute versus the solvent anymore. We're talking about the whole solution as a whole. Okay, So the moles of whatever component you're looking for in the mole fraction over the total moles of the solution. So let's say, for example, we wanted the, um, the mole fraction of the solvent. Well, that would simply be the moles of solvent over the total moles of solution. Okay, or if we wanted the mole fraction of the um, solute, it'd be the exact same thing. Moles of solute over total moles of solution. Okay. Okay. Um, and lastly, uh, there's an interesting intrinsic property here. If we were to add the uh, mole fraction of solvent and the mole fraction of solute, what do you think we would get? And if you said one, you would be correct. We would get one. Okay. Uh, here's a little practice problem for you to try out and to come to class with the answer with. Um, in terms of the mole fraction, what is the mole fraction of sulfur dioxide, SO2, industrial exhaust gas containing 128 grams of SO2 dissolved in every 1,500 grams of carbon dioxide? Okay. The first thing to do is to, is to recognize which is the solute and which is the solvent. I'll leave that up to you.